going to show us uh, another way of doing a phonics based, but after that, how to do a, a surgery, a trabeculotomy, and trabeculectomy for childhood glaucomas, for the uh, congenital glaucomas. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so you've seen phonics-based traps, but this is how I do a slight modification of the phonics-based trap. It's actually what you are comfortable with and what works best for your patients. No, the f uh, first, the other one. Excuse me. Not this one. The other one first. Trab. And I was just talking to some of the, uh, the PGs over here that the easiest way to learn how yeah. to do these releasable sutures is on goat size. You know, anybody can get a goat size and try it. It's very easy and, and then makes it much more, you, you're more uh, sort of confident about doing it on the patient. Dr. Chandramal. Thank you, ma'am. So glaucoma surgery has traditionally been all about efficacy and serious safety issues have promoted evolutionary improvements. So to create a lasting filter, you need to understand the following with respect to trabeculectomy surgery. That's essential principles of surgery, the prevention of complications and recognition and management of intra-op, early and late post-op complications. So trabeculectomy is an excellent procedure when it succeeds. To ensure it does, you've got to avoid many landmines along the way, conjunctival buttonholes, over and under filtration, hemorrhage, over the years, we've seen that surgeons do well and could do better when performing the procedure. The Moorfield Safe Surgery System of Trabeculectomy with modifications is what I practice. So I generally use brimonidin. I have no financial interest in this. Uh, as a preoperative, a drop of it on the table itself. So the peripheral alpha-2 agonist activity results in vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. and. Uh, this is uh, the Wexel fluid dissection. Cancel that or what? Oh. How do you cancel that? Yeah, so uh, the Wexel fluid dissection can help avoid complications by making the conjunctiva more mobile. So you, I'm just feeling the conjunctiva there with the uh, sponge and then... Uh, always use a non-tooth forcep for uh, making a slip on the conjunctiva. And I generally like to do it with a small fringe there so that it's easier to suture when I'm suturing. This is something I've de de uh, designed and I called it the conjunctival separator. So uh, as you see, it's a little bit like a hammer and it'll separate the conjunctiva from the sclera there so that we have a completely non-touch technique of uh, applying the mitomycin C. Mitomycin C, as ma'am has told you, and uh, Dr. Vinay as well, that you can apply in several concentrations and time however you uh, want to customize your surgery. So I generally apply it 0.2 or 0.4 for three minutes. And the scleral flap, this is a horizontal incision parallel to the limbus, is made dissecting a partial thickness scleral pocket. The two sides of the in incision are cut using, this is another scissor that I've designed. I call it the scleral scissor, as you see in the video. and. Uh, I do not cut it right up to the limbus, slightly short of the limbus, which helps in directing the aqu aqueous backwards over a wider area, encouraging a greater posterior flow and a more uh, diffuse bleb. 
and I generally use a trabeculectomy punch, so a perpendicular clean non-shell incision at, is made at the sclerolumbar junction. The ostium is punched out with the Kelly sponge. Relatively simple to do all these things. And uh, this is the peripheral iridectomy done with uh, venous scissors. You've seen it being done, and uh, nothing different from the others. And the scleral flap sutures, this Dr. Mayuri showed you an elaborate thing of, uh, it's very much like hers, what I do, and I think that's the easiest of the releasable uh, sutures that you can do. And releasable sutures have actually revolutionized the outcome of trabeculectomy, where you can actually tighten the IOP post operatively. So that's your releasable suture. And uh, this is the conjunctival closure, essentially using a round body rather than a spatulated needle. And I use continuous uh, teno nylon sutures with buried knots for the uh, closing. So biodegradable collagen matrix implant versus MMC as an adjunctive in trabeculectomy. This is actually a 24-month randomized clinical trial which said that ologen implant could be a new safe and effective alternative to MMC with similar long-term success rate. So the technical pearls are releasable sutures, ologen position, suture release, choose myopics, and repeat procedures. You can use the ologen and do. So I'll just show you a small uh, clip of this. Uh, using the ologen implant. You, this is one of my surgeries done quite some time back. I no longer do the triangular flap, but th there you put uh, the ologen as it comes and just below the conjunctiva and suture it. So this is an alternative to MMC, uh, especially in myopes. So, but of course it is an additional cost for your patient. I got a, a clip of phaco trabeculectomy because I do it very often. So I just thought I would stress on the fact that a lot of cataract surgeons do trabeculectomy. So to please do a double site procedure. And uh, after, and it's simply, it's very simple. You need to sit at the same place and just extend your hand a little bit. You make the flap superiorly as you do in trabeculectomy. And then you just extend your hand and make your phaco incision as you see there, just uh, slightly temporal to your uh, trabeculectomy flap and then go on with your phaco procedure as you would uh, normally. A double site uh, procedure actually gives better results. So for operative surgical pearls are IV infusion of mannitol as ma'am and everybody else has said and consider topical or uh, peribulbar anesthesia. I would definitely go for a peribulbar anesthesia. Never use tooth forceps to handle the conjunctiva and aim for a watertight conjunctival closure. Lower hyperoperative IOP, which is very important. Ma'am has also stressed this, and never leave the operating room with an unclosed leak. So trabeculectomy still remains the gold standard as the initial surgery for glaucoma. Technical modifications to the trabeculectomy combined with the use of applying powerful antimetabolites uh, help the surgeon to have a much better control of both the operation and the post-operative scarring. The safer surgery system's development is based on the need to improve consistency. Trabeculectomy with MMC is a complex operation requiring high degree of manual dexterity and extensive glaucoma experience. But I would encourage those of you in the audience who do perform glaucoma sur uh, surgery to continue to regard trabeculectomy as the procedure of your initial choice. So that finishes uh, my phonics-based trabeculectomy. I'll move on to uh, congenital glaucoma. Could you go on to the next one, please? OK. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, for the ologen success, you should make it sure after putting one releasable that there is a enough filtration happening. So titration of that releasable, if not done properly, if it is too tight, it is going to fail. Secondly, the ologen should be placed posterior, not near the limbus, at the apex. If it is near, then it is not going to work for you. There may be a leaky wound or something like that. So posterior placement will give you the posterior blab and a good filter. Mm -hmm. I think ologen on its uh, by itself is a little controversial because even the company now says use ologen with mitomycin. So the efficacy of it is a little bit in doubt. Yes. But I think that in myopes where you expect to yeah. get choroidal effusions and shallow ACs, it may be a little bit safer, safer. Than, yes. than just a trabeculectomy alone. Yes. Uh, anybody who wants to comment on ologen at all? No. 
Okay. If, uh, yeah, it's an our, additional uh, cost. In our hands, we have used it without mitomycin, and believe me, it is not uh, possible to go little lower than 15. After two months, the pressure is always on a higher teens. Yeah, I think that. So that in advanced cases, I will rather use it with mitomycin rather than. Yeah, mitomycin. or mitomycin alone in advanced alone cases. Alone, yeah, that is yeah. yeah. Okay, I think we. Like yes. me with trabeculotomy, uh, the pediatric glaucoma. Yeah. So uh, I'll take you to the trab or trap. So we've all seen this kind of patients at our clinics. And the anesthesia, chloral hydrate, oral or rectal, and halothane actually decreases IOP and ketamine increases it, and a tracheal tube definitely increases it. So the examination under GA is generally done before you do the surgery. So you uh, just do the tonometry immediately after induction, and then the external examination followed by the anterior segment, then the corneal diameter, both horizontal and vertical, gonioscopy, optic disc uh, photograph if possible, or else at least see the op uh, opti uh, judge the optic disc and then retinoscopy to prevent amblyopia. So these are things you need to do. So once you put your uh, child under anesthesia, the examination under anesthesia, external examination, followed by you do an applanation, uh, generally done with the Perkins handheld uh, tonometer. And uh, this is followed by the measurement of the corneal diameters. That is actually a chart of the corneal diameter in children, which I'm sure you all are uh, conversant with and uh, this is the measurement of the corneal diameter and thus into the actual surgery this actually has an audio so you can uh, put on the audio lightly please yeah so we generally do a superior rectus brittle suture to have a hold on the globe and so Become yourself because the best. So I do the phonic space as I do I would do in an adult. Teach Light cautery. Well. My to my father's help. It slowly go by and feed them on your dreams. Wash it out well. The one they fix. So I follow the same uh, procedure as I do in an adult. I generally do it like you would do SICS. So here is the important step. Go very slowly here or you could just go through. So very slowly you create that groove and then Wait for the point where the aqueous trickles out. You can see the aqueous trickling out. That's actually your end point for uh, trabeculotomy. You can see the swab wet with aqueous and then dissect out your Schlem's canal. And then you do your trabeculectomy as you would do uh, otherwise. Directomy as you would do normally. Suturing of both the scleral and the conjunctiva is the same as you would do in an adult. This is a clip I got, which I thought I'd show you the main part in a more magnified way, uh, just to show you the groove. This is an older surgery done, limbus-based, and uh, with a 
triangular flap, but I just want to show you the groove here because uh, So just uh, see that. Make it very slowly with patience. And there you see the groove. You see right. the groove. So I think That's this is very nicely visible yeah. that it's a junction yeah. between the white and the blue-gray yes. where you expect to see the canalish limb. And you can see how easily the trabeculotome is going in and, and being uh, swept into the anterior chamber. Yes. So the rest is the same. So, uh, so patients need to be followed indefinitely for evidence of blood thinning. And parents need to remain vigilant for signs of infection. These are some of the children I operated last year. And uh, the trick is actually catch them early to help them see the sun, moon, and the stars. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. I think this is a really important last slide to say that obviously the earlier we do the surgery, the more likely that we can get a reversal of the optic nerve head. We also uh, will avoid all these Harb's try and things that are occurring in the cornea when patients prevent, uh, present late. What sort of target IOP would you keep in children, Chandrima? Uh, I'd like to keep it, ma'am, maybe in the low teens. In the teens, definitely. OK, so uh, I think earlier we were thinking that a child was like an adult and less than 18 or less than 20 was a good uh, IOP to have. But I think if you look at children, most of the children, normal children, have an IOP of about 10 to 12. So I think these days we prefer to have much lower no. intraocular pressures in our congenital glaucomas. And we can actually see over a period of six months or one year, a 0 0.7, 0 0.8 cup actually reversing to a 0.2. So the lower the intraocular pressure that you keep, the better the visual acuity, the clearer the cornea, the more the reversal that you're likely to get. So the target IOP in children is very different from the target IOP in an adult. Any other questions about children and pediatric glaucomas, about surgery? I think the other thing to, to, to say is that in children, quite often, the uh, failure is because of scleral fibrosis. It's like, you know, when you think of doing a dacryocystectomy or whatever in a child, you'll always say, wait for three, wait till the child is two years or three years old because you know that anything you do earlier than that is going to close. So the same thing happens in a child that, unlike an adult where most failures are subconjunctival, in a child, most failures are subscleral or scleral fibrosis that is occurring. So uh, application of the mitomycin, both subconjunctivally and subsclerally, helps to increase the success of the uh, uh, IOP lowering in the long term. Because remember, the child is coming to you when they're five days old, two days old, and they're going to live to be 70 and 80. So you have to make sure that whatever you do lasts the uh, duration that they're going to be uh, alive. And maybe you know, at some point, you may need to add a, a medicine. Maybe at some point, you need to do a bleb revision. Thank you. No 